Welcome back to another three things here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THF publisher Andrew Jones, and the final score of today's game at the Battle for Atlantis in the Bahamas, North Carolina 91, Northern Iowa 69. And as you can see, I am not in the Bahamas. No palm trees around me, unfortunately. No beautiful blue water near me, unfortunately. But the deal is every time this time of year, when there's basketball and football overlapping and I have to make a decision, I almost always choose football, especially when it's the NC State game. And I wouldn't be able to make it back for football as well. So I am here, but we do have two people from our staff in the Bahamas and they'll be filing reports and we've got videos and everything else coming shortly on our site. Plus I'm going to do some stuff here at home. It's a little awkward covering something from home. It's very weird not to be there, but we will bang this stuff out as best we can. I'm going to do the three things for all three of these games solo because we've got people scattered around doing Thanksgiving stuff and everything else. So let's go ahead and get into it. Tar Heels 91, Panthers 69. I'm going to begin with the negative, and the negative is the first half. Carolina did not look very good in the first half. Looked for the first time this year like they were kind of clanking into each other. Didn't have great fluidity on offense. Defensively, that just wasn't the energy that you would want to see on a more regular basis from this club. It was a similar theme uh, with the way they played late in the first half last Friday night against Cal Riverside. They allowed you and I to shoot 60% in the first half. Northern Iowa out-rebounded Carolina 18-12 to in the first half. And you and I had runs of 10-0 and 10-2 to in the first half. Now, Northern Iowa is not a terrible team. The, the top half of the Missouri Valley Conference every year has got good teams, clubs that can win a game or two in the tournament. They can upset people. So there's no shame in having a tussle with Northern Iowa for a while. But there's no way this team should have two runs like that that they would allow in one half. A 10-2 run is going to happen. Hit a couple threes, you get a couple of misses, a run out, boom, it's a 10-2 run. But a 10-0 run later followed by a 10-2 run tells me that the Tar Heels weren't completely dialed in in the first half. There was a lot of substituting going on. I do think sometimes that messes with the meshing, and it's going to be that way for a while this season as we've talked about in articles and podcasts this week and last week as well, and some of the players have told us this as well. It's going to take time for everything to sort of get figured out, and that includes Hubert with some of the player groupings he uses and everything else. So it was 41-35 Northern Iowa at the half. The second thing I want to talk about, and before I do very quickly, just a quick note, uh, the Tar Heels had six players in double figures, led by Harrison Ingram with 16 points, Elliot Cadeau, 15, Cormac Ryan, 15, R.J. Davis, 13, Jalen Withers, 11, and Armando Baycott, 10 points. Okay. The second half was the complete opposite of the first half. Uh, the Tar Heels opened up with a 16-1 to run, and they eventually stretched it to 34 to six they were raining threes in fact there was a stretch in the game starting with the last three of the first half rj davis hit one very late the tar heels made nine out of ten threes they made eight of their nine first three-point attempts of the second half now this is important to note because we have consecutive games now where hubert davis kind of lit into the guys about defense and about overall energy and that kind of thing. And it's the second straight game. The Tar Heels have opened the second half with an outstanding run. So last Friday night against Cal Riverside, Carolina has a 19 to nothing run to open the second half. It spans about nine and a half minutes. Riverside missed its first 13 shots from the floor. Today, Carolina has a 16 to one run. Northern Iowa, which is a much better team than Riverside, didn't score a field goal for the first 608 of the half. And eventually the run reached 34 to six. The Tar Heels were bouncy. They were fast. They were springy. Their arms were all over the place. They forced a, a shot clock violation. They had blocked shots. Uh, they had blocked shots 
rotating defensively. Armando, again, showing his improved quickness with another one of those kinds of blocks, either rotating or recovering after getting beaten. The heels really flexed on the glass. I think they grabbed eight of the first nine rebounds of the half. There was a point where Carolina had seven assists in the second half. Northern Iowa had none. I mean, it was total domination. We saw a variety of guys getting threes. They were getting open catch and shoot threes. And I think one of the differences offensively is when they were in the half court, they pushed more. They were more aggressive. In this first half, it looked a lot like last year. A lot of standing around, some bad spacing, a lot of guys taking photos. And I think they ran what appeared to be too many set plays. And Northern Iowa knew a lot of the set plays. One thing that it'll be interesting to see how Hubert Davis handles the offense moving forward this season is that he's got a lot of veteran experienced guys, guys that know how to play off of one another. He needs to let them play. He needs to let them play sort of a freelance with motion principles, something that Roy Williams did a lot too. He's got to trust these guys and let them play. And what you saw in the run against Cal Riverside last week, the 17 nothing and then 19 nothing, they were playing that way offensively. What you saw in 16 to 1 that became 34 to 6 today, you saw that offensively. This team needs to push. They need to push in the half court, need to push in the open court. And when they do that, they get open looks and they hit open looks. They're able to get more offensive rebounds. They get teams playing literally on their heels, no pun intended, and it gives them a decided advantage. Also, in the second half, Carolina did out-rebound Northern Iowa. I believe it was 24 to 15. So they were doing pretty much everything right. There was a stretch where Northern Iowa made a little bit of a push, but the Tar Heels had had that huge run that pretty much decided the game. In fact, it was, they were up 22, 69, 47, I believe was their largest margin of victory. Okay. The third thing is what does this mean? Very quickly, and we're going to talk more about what tomorrow means and what Friday means because this is going to be an evolving thing. But for the Tar Heels to get 10 points and eight rebounds from Armando Baycott, and he had one shot attempt for a long time in the first half, and at halftime, only three shot attempts. Okay, they were down, but it didn't cost them the game. Last year, uh, again, it was RJ didn't score till two and a half minutes left in the first half, and Armando had one or two shots at that point. This team would have been in bad shape. But they have so many parts, and you saw those parts today. Six guys in double figures. You saw comfortable scores. You saw each player in a different sequence sort of showcase a little bit of what they're about. I thought Jalen Withers gave them a lot today and showed us in his snapshot of play the kinds of things he can do for this team. He's a guy that is comfortable with the ball 20 feet from the basket. He's comfortable getting the ball in the lower block. He's comfortable moving toward the basket with the ball. He's comfortable on the defensive end. He can block shots in a recovery or straight up situation. And he hit the floor at least three times today, diving after loose balls, the energy he brings to the floor. And he's Kind of a strong guy, so he's got a little bit of brute stuff going on there. That's what this team needs. And he started the second half, by the way. In fact, Paxson Woodrick did not start. Seth Trimble started the, the game, and then Jalen Withers started the second half. I love what we saw from Cadeau. Elliot Cadeau, especially in the second half, played with his head up and really saw a lot. And it wasn't just his pass that was an assist. His pass led to the pass a lot. I mean, if he was a hockey player tonight, he would have been all over the stat sheet, all over the stat sheet because of how they handle, how they score assists. Another thing, too, was Harrison Ingram. I'm really enjoying watching this guy's game. I, I like sort of the old man element to his game, but it's not all old man. He's got a modern game, but he's got an old man game too, where he can use his hip and back a guy in. He knows how to gain separation with his body, which is important, especially when he's playing the four. Another thing too is Cormac Ryan started at the three. And after the first substitution wave, he was the three again. He's a six foot five guy who's strong. He plays with a tremendous amount of energy and tenacity. He should be a good weak side rebounder. On offense, he should be a guy that can rip and run every once in a while on defense. And I think we'll see that come out. It's no 
it's no coincidence that some of his threes that he got today that were open and that he finally hit were when he was actually playing the three on offense. So the Tar Heels pick up a good win. You got to like wins when you pull away and you have decisive runs. Although I think Carolina fans would like to see a really good first half at some point. They, they, they were pushed a little bit by Radford. They were pushed a little bit by, by Lehigh, but they pulled away in both those games. They pulled away against Riverside and they pulled away again today. Remember guys, this is going to take time, but when you see the good and when you see the good for lengthy stretches, it really gives you an indication that this team has a chance to be very, very good, but it's going to take time. Now, tomorrow, they play the winner of the Villanova-Texas Tech game. Remember that Kerwin Walton is still on the Texas Tech roster. Uh, last time I checked, he wasn't playing a whole lot, but he was part of their rotation, I believe. And Villanova is a club that lost to Penn last week. But this is college basketball. Uh, don't judge a team by who they lost to. Northern Iowa looked pretty good for a while today, and they were one and two with uh, both their losses against the only two Division One teams that they had played. So looking forward to seeing what the Tar Heels look like on Thursday. Can they play a more 40-minute game? It might be required in order to beat either Villanova or Texas Tech. If you like this video, please click like. If you're excited by what you saw from the Tar Heels 34-6 to run, go ahead and click like. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with all of your Tar Heel friends. We've got a lot coming to you from the Bahamas. we got a lot coming to you from my office here at home. And, of course, I will be at Carter-Finley Stadium on Friday night, a massive football game coming between the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack. I'm AJ, and I will see you tomorrow.